Synthesizers have become one of my favorite tools for creating music and just making my songs have a unique character. They open up possibilities that aren't really available with other instruments, even with effects or other processing. I love to use them to create dreamlike atmospheres or ethereal textures that you couldn't really get with a traditional acoustic instrument. Turning the knobs and just dialing in everything is such a fun process that really inspires so many new ideas. I think the synth can coexist perfectly and synergistically with lead guitar, especially in a heavy progressive metal context. The futuristic or sci-fi type of sounds you can get with a synthesizer, for me, work perfectly in a progressive metal context in the way that I like to present my songwriting. So today, I want to go through my thought process and rebuild a tone from scratch from a demo I've been working on lately. This particular section is a lead guitar line doubled by like an airy or dreamy synthesizer, and we'll see the whole thought process from like the inception of the idea to creating the tone from just a blank slate. Okay, so the first example tone I want to take a look at is from a demo I've been working on lately where there's a lead guitar line that's doubled by a synth tone. So let's uh, let's just listen to that and we'll see how it sounds. Okay, so that uh, that section right there had the lead tone and there's a synth doubling it with like an airy sort of like mechanical or robotic uh, future sound. Let's just listen to them together so we can hear uh, hear like how they how they complement one another. Yeah, so the doubled synth tone, it almost doesn't sound like a second instrument. It's kind of like an effect on the guitar part. It's uh, I made the tone in such a way where it just sits kind of above the guitar and wraps around it instead of it being like a distinct other voice. Even though it still is, is distinct, it just you can hear it that way as almost like an effect on the guitar line. So I wanna go through and rebuild that tone now so you can see kind of how my thought process works when I'm going about making a tone like this. Oh, let's listen to the synth by itself first before we get into that. We only listen to it with the guitar. So it's got like a kind of a washing, like modulation on it. It's sitting pretty high in the register, like there, and it's an airy, airy sort of metallic quality to it, which is kind of hard to combine those two things, but that's how it sounds to me, and that's a, that's kind of the, the thing I was going for with it, to sit around the guitar, since the guitar tone is kind of a warm lead sound, I wanted to give it some, uh, another dimension to the whole, to the melody line, instead of just adding it through one instrument, I did it with two. So let's go through and rebuild that tone now, just from scratch. So this tone I made with the mini log, uh, I'm going to rebuild it on the mini log, since, you know, that would make sense. So we'll start with just a, uh, a basic patch and on the mini log is just one single sawtooth wave. Okay, so that's what we start with. That's the, the first part of the melody line. This is the tone we're gonna start with. So to get that like metallic uh, futuristic quality, I wanted to start with a triangle wave. So a triangle wave to me sounds like rounded or kind of like, think of how like a flute would sound uh, or like when you hold the sustain on a flute or when you just play a sustained note. Like a dial tone or something like that, you know? It just sounds very robotic or futuristic to me. Um, and I wanted to go for that because I'm kind of inspired by like video game music and other sounds like that that I've heard in uh, that kind of media. And I always like to play with those kinds of textures in my songwriting. So 
um, when I'm going to make a tone like that, I usually like to use the tr uh, triangle wave as kind of like the lead sound. So let's work with just that sound, that tone for right now, and we'll blend in the other oscillators as we go to like paint the rest of the picture with this with the tone. All right, so on the mini log, you've got two analog oscillators, VCO1, VCO2, and we've got a third digital oscillator. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do with the digital oscillator. We'll start with the uh, the two analogs and then add the digital one last. So VCO1, that's the one we were just working with. That's gonna be our triangle wave. So I want that to sit pretty high up in the register to be sort of bell-like almost, to give it like a, a chimey quality when you hear it. Okay, so there's an octave control here. We'll just flip that up one, so. Okay, that's the tone we're working with right now with just the triangle. So let's adjust the, um, I'll turn these guys off. Let's adjust the, uh, the shape knob and we'll see how that affects the sound. So the shape knob for the triangle adds like another set of triangles into it at a different phase. So it gives it a bit of a, just a bit of a different texture and kind of, uh, kind of distorts it a little bit. With this uh, triangle wave, I like to go just a little bit, maybe about a quarter of the way up with the knob. And that's just specific to the mini log. But uh, most, like any analog type synthesizer, whether it's an actual analog synth or like a software synth emulating this is gonna have these kind of controls. So the idea would apply pretty much anywhere. Okay, so let's leave the shape right there. Give it a little bit of that like grit from the breakup, but it sounds kind of harsh to me if we take it too far. So we'll leave that there. Okay, that's gonna be our uh, first oscillator. So the second oscillator, I wanted to add a little bit of dirt, or uh, dis not distortion, but a little grit to it, and add a little bit of warmth back in so that it's not all just upper register kind of noise. I wanted to give it a little bit of body. For that, I wanted to go with a sawtooth wave. The sawtooth wave is like the first one we heard um, when the patch was just blank. So let's listen to that now. It sounds a little bit grittier than the other one, and that's from the way that the waveform like chops off instead of having a smooth up and down like the triangle does. So we'll leave that at the second octave out of four so that it's one octave under the first oscillator. And let's, uh, let's actually go for the shape control now for that one. It almost sounds more triangle-like as you turn the shape knob with the sawtooth. So to contrast them a little bit, let's leave it pretty much all the way back. Actually, yeah, let's just leave it all the way back for the sawtooth, I like that tone. Okay, so now let's hear that together with, uh, let's use the second oscillator at about half volume and the first oscillator at about two thirds or three quarters or whatever you wanna call it. Yeah, that's getting us there. Okay, so we haven't touched the digital oscillator yet. There's one more thing I wanna add before we, uh, before we move to that. So there's two controls here, the sync control and the ring modulator. So the sync control, um, what it does is it will, the phases of the two oscillators will be forcibly synchronized after so many um, revolutions or cycles. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but it can kind of make your lead, if you're using a, the synth for a lead line or a melody, it can make it sound more cohesive and there'll be less modulation between the phase of the two. So let's just compare it and see what we like. Okay, that's with it on. I like it a lot better off in this case. I kind of like how the modulation happens between the phases because again, we don't want this line or this tone to be so forward where it's uh, overshadowing the lead guitar part. We want it to just complement that lead guitar part. So some of the modulation is gonna help us out with uh, kind of giving it a washy quality in the mix so where it's not overpowering the lead guitar, it's just sitting with it. Let's look at the cross modulation between them. So with the cross modulation, it's gonna affect the pitch. I like to use just a little bit of it on tones like this. Because it gives it, uh, again, it's gonna help us get some separation in the mix and help us uh, get that quality we're looking for. Now let's take a look at adding in this third digital oscillator. So to accent that quality we went for with the triangle wave, I think a sine wave would sound very good right here. 
So, okay, we've got four different types of sine waves on the digital oscillator. Um, it's basically just another waveform like the other ones are. It just has a different source. Uh, the source is not an analog electronic oscillator. It's a digital source, and that kind of changes the sound qualities, but it doesn't really matter for our case. We're just going to use whichever one we like. So let's isolate that sound. We'll play the same little melody bit. cycling through the different sine waves. Again, this one sounds kind of telephony or like futuristic, similar to the triangle, so I think it works well here. Well, that sounds pretty cool. It almost sounds like a Fender Rhodes, sort of. That one sounds very organ-like. Hmm. <laughs> I think three was the one I used originally, and I'm feeling three right now. So let's go with three. Okay, so now we wanna put these back in like whatever proportions we like. So let's start with all three oscillators right at noon on the volume, on just the mixer. So let's hear what that, hear what that sounds like. Okay, I think we need to go a bit up on the first oscillator because we want that airy quality. So we want the, the higher octave one to be more prominent. Turn VCO2 down a little bit and let's take the sine wave down to about a third or so on the knob. Let's see how that sounds. Yeah, I think I like that. Okay, so there's a few other things we can uh, tweak about this tone before we just call it done, right? I think this sounds really good, but let's do let's take a look at some other things we might want to uh, might want to check out. So now we can get to the dynamics of the sound. Now that we've kind of made our, our base patch, we just know what the sound is. We can get into the dynamics and how it's gonna sit with other parts. So we can first start with the cutoff knob. On a synthesizer, the cutoff is basically where you set the, the cutoff frequency for a low pass filter. So if we turn it all the way down, we don't hear anything because the, the low pass filter is just cutting out everything. But as we turn it up, we uh, uncover more of those frequencies as we turn the knob to the right. So we basically, we're setting where, where we want the limit of the high end cutoff to be. So if we set it down here, we don't really hear much and we lose some of that airy quality. So let's bring it up. Okay, that's about there. Maybe we should go all the way. Maybe not all the way, so let's go about there. That's maybe about a little over two thirds for, uh, if you can't tell on this uh, sky camera here. All right, so I think that's a good amount of high frequency to leave in. Let's see if we wanna add some resonance. A resonance is a boost right at that cutoff frequency. Oh, that's really harsh <laughs> if we just boost it all the way. I like a little bit of the resonance there because it gives it a, just makes it stand out in a certain register that we'll be able to work around with the guitar. Okay, so now the last thing I wanna try is um, add some overdrive. This is with no overdrive. And this is a pre-filter overdrive, so you drive the signal before it gets to the filter, so it hits the filter a little harder. This is 50%, let's go 100. I think 100 is gonna be a little tough to, to fit in with the guitars. So let's try 50. Actually, no, I think zero on this one works. Cause we don't want it to overpower that guitar and eat up the, the body of like the cabinet resonance. Let's move on to the uh, ADSR, which is where you shape the like volume profile of the sound. ADSR stands for attack, decay, sustain, release. For this tone, we want the attack knob to be basically instant. We want it to be all the way down because what that's controlling is how, how long it takes for your sound to go from zero volume to max volume. So if it's at zero, we hear it immediately. If I turn it up, I can kind of give it a ramp into max volume. This is nice when you want to make a tone that you don't really want to hear the attack of it. You just want it to fade, like come in on a nice swell. And sometimes that's good for sense. But with this one specifically, I want, I do want to hear the attack. I want it to be outlining that guitar melody. So we want to turn the attack down. Now let's go to the sustain level. The sustain level is 
when you hold the key and you just hold it, what is that volume level after it gets to that place where you're just holding it, right? So for this, we want to have a, I'd say a respectable sustain, maybe like two thirds. So that when we hold those notes out, it'll give us a little bit of volume, but it won't just be overpowering and eating, eating up a bunch of uh, EQ real estate. And then we will set the decay time. So the decay time sets after your attack volume level, how long does it take to go from that level to the sustain level? So if it's really short, then it just decays really quickly, but let's give it a medium decay time. These you just set for context and taste really, how the, how the volume profile you want to, uh, to leave. And the release uh, control basically is like, how long does the sound fade out after you release the key? So if it's really long, then it just stays as long uh, for a long time after I let go of the key. But if it's short, then it just dies out. For this one, I don't want it to die out immediately. I want it to have a little bit of release time. So not quite that much because then the harmony gets muddy. Maybe we do need a really short one. Yeah, let's go short. Gives us a little bit of a cleaner sound. It'll leave you some room for uh, reverb. So let's look at the LFO. The um, LFO stands for low frequency oscillator. And this with this tone, I wanted to go with the cutoff. You can set a, another oscillator to basically move the cutoff point of this filter. So when uh, let's do that with just the uh, BPM setting to match it to the tempo of the overall system. We'll do that on a triangle wave so that the wave, the waveform of that cutoff oscillation is gonna be like a triangle. And then, um, yeah, we'll just blend that in just a little bit. So there are two controls for an LFO. There's a rate and an intensity. Let's go a little slower, so it's kind of a, oh, an enveloping sort of thing. A little lower intensity. All right, and the last thing I wanna to add to this tone is something called portamento, which is, um, think of like when you slide between notes on a guitar. You can basically slide between notes on a synth if you change this portamento control. So this is with nothing. And then we turn the portamento up. It like glides between pitches instead of just going from uh, note to note. So I like to blend that sort of sound in with, uh, with synth tones in this type of context, specifically because it's really nice for get, letting the guitar attack stand out instead of just hearing the really percussive quality of changing directly between those synth tones. But I don't want it to be super like that glidey because then it just kind of, it, it loses the tightness of the, like, the melody line. So let's blend it in just a little bit. Okay, that was nothing. That's a little too much. Let's bring it down just a bit. And there you have it, my friends. That is the tone. The only other thing that I did to it in recording was I used a couple of pedals. So let's uh, listen to this patch one more time, or we'll listen to the section of the song again since uh, it's been a while since we've <laughs> we've heard the whole context. Okay, so that was uh, that's where the the tone fits in, and we just rebuilt that same synth tone. This guy right here. We rebuilt that on the mini log, but in uh, this recording, I used a couple of pedals. So let's go through those effects now. The first effect I used on this is the Walrus Audio Julia, which is a, a combined chorus vibrato pedal. But on this particular instance, I only used the uh, chorus effect. So pretty simple controls. You got your waveform here. You can do a sine wave or a triangle for the chorus. On uh, this one, I used a sine to give it a little bit more of a gentle feel. I went with a pretty slow rate, uh, just to, again, I think modulation that's like really slow, almost sounds more of like an overall filter rather than like a modulation, just from the way we hear it. So that's kind of the vibe I wanted to go with here. So that's what I did. Uh, this is a mix knob. 
basically if it's full noon it's full chorus if it's completely left there's no chorus all the way right is all vibrato and you can blend the chorus and the vibrato for this i went with about uh, maybe a quarter mix of the chorus. Depth is about two thirds, or sorry, depth is about one third. And there's another knob here called lag, which uh, changes the phase of how the chorus signal is summed back in with the dry signal. And you can get like a just a completely different quality with it, almost like a seasick sort of like weird, like spooky quality as you turn the lag knob up. So I tend to like that quality of this pedal. It's one of my favorite sounds and I uh, keep it at about two thirds for this tone. So we got that there. Let's hear how that sounds now with the, um, with the inclusion of the Julia. So now I'll turn it back off. No modulation. Just so you can really hear it, we'll turn the knob up. So you can hear it modulate the signal and I love the way it sounds on synthesizers. It just really, really sounds great. And the next pedal I use here is the uh, Seymour Duncan Dark Sun. This is a signature delay reverb pedal designed by Seymour Duncan and Mark Holcomb of Periphery, which I absolutely love to use. It has some really, really great sounds and it's combined delay and reverb with a bunch of different routing options. So you can route the delay into the reverb, the reverb into the delay and do all sorts of really cool things. It's a very, very fun pedal. So for this particular sound, I wanted to give a good bit of reverb. So let's bring that knob up, bring the mix to about 30. And there's a, a size knob here that basically control, controls the decay time. So we'll start on 25. So yeah, that sounds blended in. Oh. <laughs> Turn the delay off so we can uh, do it step by step. Okay, I think that's a good decay time. Uh, maybe bring the mix down just a little bit. Bring So they're both at 25. Right now we have this routed with the delay into the reverb, kind of like you would traditionally hear. Uh, it might sound better the other way though once we bring the delay in, so we'll see. This is just on a quarter note timing as well. For the delay, we haven't brought that in. So now let's bring some of the, uh, the delay in. So the timing is set. I want the feedback to be, let's start feedback at 30. If you, don't, uh, if you don't know, feedback on a delay controls like how many repeats you get. And the mix is just the volume level of all those repeats. So we'll start on a 20 mix. I tend to like to keep the feedback high with the mix low. Jeez. Okay, actually let's turn the feedback up just a little bit. Yeah, that sounds really good right there. Let's leave the feedback there and we'll control the mix. Let's see, bring the mix up a little bit and see how we like it. Actually, I think it sounds better at about 20. Let's go 20, 25, yeah. I'm afraid of the, <laughs> the numbers that aren't multiples of five here. Okay, so the dark sun has a few other controls. We can do some modulation and filtering to either delay, reverb, or both. So we'll start with a low pass filter. For this, I wanna set the low pass filter pretty, uh, pretty generously. So we'll set it at 50 for now. So again, this is filtering off some of the high end of our delay repeats and reverb tail. Yeah, I wanna keep uh, most of that out. Let me go back down to 35. So that the high end is really just the, uh, more of the, the shimmer of the like actual dry signal. High pass filter, we'll cut out a good bit of the lows too to keep the reverb from getting muddy. Even though this signal doesn't have a ton of low end content, and there's a saturation control you can use to like add a bit of distortion to your reverb or your delay or both. I kind of like the way it sounds uh, with this pedal, but I don't like to use it too heavily, so we'll put it on about 15. Let's just crank it up and see how it sounds. A little too dirty, I think. Let's bring it back down to about, let's say, 18. Okay, and we don't want to do any modulation from the dark sun since we're uh, I've got we got the modulation going from the Julia, so we'll leave that there. 
And this blend control would apply for this modulation. I uh, would say we wanted, we wanted to modulate either the reverb or the delay a certain amount, but we're not using it. So why am I even talking about it? Who knows? Okay, so those are the only two effects I used on this particular tone. Let's try and adjust the uh, routing of the reverb here and see how we like that. So now this is the reverb going into the delay. I think I like it the first way better. It's more of like a, I guess, traditional setup or traditional routing you would hear for delay and reverb. But I love that this has the option to just switch them like just that easily. It really can make a big difference in a lot of situations. In this particular one, I just want to go reverb or delay into reverb uh, like you would normally hear. So yeah, those are all the effects I used. That's the tone we ended up with. All right, let's give myself a test here. How close did I get to the actual recorded tone? Let's see. That one has a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of a high-end content to it, but it also has an EQ on it in Logic, so a little different. Give myself a, <laughs> maybe a B minus here for <laughs> recreating the tone exactly. But um, yeah, those are the, all the effects I used. That's the general approach I took for making this specific tone and going with this, uh, this lead line. There's a lot of other contexts where you can use synthesizers, obviously, but this is one that I find myself needing to do a lot. And I think that a lot of people are interested in making this kind of sound because uh, synthesizers are really so easy to access now with software synthesizers or with stuff like the mini log. Um, the concepts are the same really wherever you take them with analog synthesis and there are lots of other kinds of synthesis out there, but this is specifically analog or emulated analog. If you were using anything like that, you could use these same concepts to make a similar tone. I love using synths with lead lines like this or to like add texture to songs. It's just such a really fun way to, to get creative with tones and soundscapes and give your songs like a unique texture that really you can't get with other instruments. The synth is such a such a unique platform for that. Well, all right, my friends, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you for checking it out. Um, hope you enjoyed making the tone with the mini log here. I love this instrument, it's so much fun to play. Um, maybe I'll do another one of these videos with Alchemy soon of how to do this with just software, because um, I know if any of you out there are using Logic Pro, then you've already got Alchemy. And that is just a whole, whole like another world of a synthesizer program to get into and just really lose your mind over. <laughs> Let me know what kind of synths you guys are into as well. Like what kinds of effects you like to use on the synthesizers and how you use them in your process. I'm super interested in hearing about that kind of stuff. All right, everybody, I will see you later. Peace.